I, I mentioned that I'd uh, like to focus on um, uh, what the what internet technology has been able to do uh, with regard to the publishing and distribution of music. Um, for a long time, um, the music industry, as it is called, uh, would invite artists of uh, different styles, forms to come and record and would publish and distribute their work. But in the last, I would say, 15 years, uh, there has been almost a complete, I mean a gradual, but all it's now almost complete, shutdown of the music industry with regard to looking at diversity in Indian music. So while in 1902 when the first commercial recordings of Indian music were made and when recording expeditions came to India, all kinds of music was looked at and recorded and sought and coaxed and persuaded, artists were persuaded to record and obviously uh, great, there was great business sense in doing so, but regional forms, little known forms, all were captured um, with recording technology. Till 1984 almost when cassette technology and the cassette boom in the 80s, uh, there was this, uh, there, were, there were huge, uh, as many as I'm told 300 uh, labels and music companies recording all kinds of music. Um, of course the larger ones would concentrate on Hindi film music, but um, I'm told that in the 80s, um, just 40% of the music market was actually, uh, was consumers who were looking at film music. But 60% of the, of recorded music came, was in the form of regional f um, artists singing a variety of forms. However, in the last 10 to 15 years, slowly, uh, there has been almost a complete neglect of many, many forms of music. And uh, even in, even with Hindi film music, it's only a certain kind of music that finds favor with the mainstream, the big, la the large labels uh, that have been in business for a long time. What this meant was not just that music was not, diverse forms of music were not being captured, recorded and distributed and documented, but it it also meant that people and uh, musicians and artists were being forced to look at uh, certain ways of making music. To give you an example, in Delhi there is a, f there is a wonderful family of sarangi players. Um, for, uh, for six to seven generations, uh, the family has been involved with um, studying sarangi, teaching, playing, and they're very eminent performers. One of the young performers from that family told us that this was about 10 years ago that when that it was his ambition to document his family's work by uh, by publishing a CD and therefore he approached a large number of uh, record labels everywhere he was told ye aajkal chalta nahi hai ab aap fusion kijiye tab chalega so he said you know i i really like fusion also but it is i feel that i would like to document the family's involvement, deep involvement with uh, the art of sarangi playing. And I want to record a solo, but nobody is willing to record. And, and so I think, you know, finally, I will just have to make the kind of music that I'm being asked to make. On the one hand, you know, all of us could sit back and say, well, if you wish to be coaxed into doing something or forced into doing something, that's your prerogative to say yes or no. But at the same time, I think it's, it's a, it, that, that particular example really stresses the importance uh, and the importance, the significance of internet technology and the empowerment that it has given to a lot of artists who have been able to engage with it. Um, because it has made it possible for Indian musicians to record themselves, to publish on their own terms and c independent terms and conditions, and it has made it possible for, for them to free themselves of the, this kind of rampant tyranny of, of the mainstream large labels. Um, having said that, there, are sti there is still a prestige that is associated with recording with a large label and the launch party that goes with it and sometimes the stamp sized picture that comes out uh, you know on in advertisement that comes that you see in some uh, publications but in, you know what has uh, uh, what internet technology has done is that today across the country there are 
a large number of record labels and a large number of independent artists uh, who really do not um, engage any longer with, with the big labels. They record the music that they want to, that they wish to, rep you know, that they, they, they would like to sort of ha leave behind as a, as a mark of their work. They distribute it on their own terms and conditions. Sometimes they withdraw the, uh, an, an album that was created four years ago because they feel that this is not a good representation of their work any longer. And I di don't see that ever happening in, in with, a, with a regular record label. Once you have, because what was the way in which an artist engaged with a record label? Um, for a lot of us uh, who were studying and are studying traditional forms of music, Nothing in our talim ever prepares us for a formal legal agreement. The only agreement that we knew and were taught was that if you learned a composition and if your ustad or guru told you that this was uh, composed by so and so pandit or ustad, you had to just touch your ear in a gesture of respect or take his name and say, ye hame unse mili. That was it. That was the acknowledgement and credit. That's it. There was nothing more that we were taught. How then does one expect to know about a formal contract? When that contract should be studied? What are the areas that one should watch out for? And very often it's in a language that we don't know also. I mean, very often it is I impossible that a contract written in English with a lot of legal terms may not actually make sense to anyone, even if you're fluent in English. So, and, and I can uh, vouch for this that I speak from personal experience that in my early recordings, I uh, was never given a contract or explained the, cl uh, the clauses of a contract before I went into a recording studio. It was only, in, in fact, usually after the launch of the, uh, the album that somebody would call from the record company and say, Wai, uh, wo, tumhara contract hai gaya zara. And then I would read this huge document, which basically, if, if the English was to be followed, meant that I, had, uh, I was bonded labor for that uh, record company for the rest of my life, including, including, this is very, very important, that I was signing away the rights for Rag Yaman, which I had never owned in the first place. <laughs> so I had given them full uh, copyright over Rag Yaman and Khamaj. And now if I ever wanted to sing it again, then heaven help me, and I have to go back to the record label and seek their permission. Now I am I'm saying that these are the kind of contracts that are regularly used even today. Even today, this is the kind of contract that a lot of musicians are signing. Uh, because nothing in their training or their talim ever prepares them for this uh, uh, this world of uh, complete, um, I mean, I would say proprietorial control over one's work. And although I'm not saying that internet technology has suddenly given us this, you know, this freedom to soar away and do what we like, because I think each medium has to be understood, and there are problems with each medium and format and those have to be you learn usually unfortunately on the job and therefore the lessons are not always very pleasant but at the same time at least that one beginning that one makes of saying that here is a piece of music that I would like to share with my listeners and this is how I would like to share it let us say that it is a it is, I would like to record a one hour alap in a particular rag why should anybody tell me that no uh, you know aadhe ghante se zyada koi nahi sunta hai so why should anybody tell me that if I really do want to present something in a particular way or if I have uh, composed a piece of music which I would like to share with listeners, I feel that that independence certainly has come about uh, through internet technology and the many, many ways of publishing and distribution. Um, and therefore, for the last uh, nine or ten years, um, um, Anish, my husband, and I have been working with our colleagues to see how internet platforms, distribution platforms can be used uh, 
to uh, share our work and the work of our colleagues with uh, music lovers across the world. Um, and this did really give us an opportunity to engage uh, at various levels with artists, with people who are buying music, who are seeking music. And the main problem right now lies in the fact that although the technology is really empowering, but it is being used again by the people who once uh, were exploiting artists in many ways. So today, if people are saying that, you know, you can have your work published in 300 online digital stores across the world, uh, including iTunes and Napster and this and that, iTunes and Napster is also getting a lot of its content from India from the very same people who once exploited artists. And therefore, when you go with your one album of Alap for one hour, they say, yeah, 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 sure, you can use this. It's a free platform. I mean, it, there are certain uh, parameters that you have to adhere to, but they are, it's really not going to give you any prominence. So while internet technology has made it possible for us to share music on our own terms and conditions, discovery of that music still remains a huge problem. How do people sitting in this room find out whether they can find you know, a, a, a recording of a Dhrupadya from Darbhanga uh, made 50 years ago? How do they know that they can find it on the net? We do not have all the platforms for for distribution and for publishing and promotion, including things like places like YouTube, are actually now controlled by a lot of people who have the money to pay for the media. And therefore, we still uh, face that problem. OK, it's out there. The music is there. It belongs to us. We can administer our rights as we wish to. But at the same time, uh, it's still in the hands of the same people, the same music industry who has now understood the worth of internet technology and they were laughing at all of us when we started work nine years ago. Today they're all using digital platforms and distribution platforms, but they've taken over and they are very much in the same position of calling the shots and therefore I guess we'll all have to get creative yet again and find ways of beating them at their, at their own game. Um, I think I'll, I'll, and there are several things to be said with regard to music and technology, but I think I'll stop for right now and, and maybe uh, later we can come back.